good everyone, Jossie here, and I'm really excited about today's video. A lot of you all have been asking about, do I actually use the Pixel 8 Pro and how my experience has been the past few months? So in today's video, I'm gonna do an official review and comparison of the Pixel 8 Pro versus the iPhone 15 Pro. In this video, we're gonna be doing more of a real world and like practical comparison between the two. The Pixel 8 Pro was my first ever Android purchase. So I've been an Apple fanboy my entire life. I'm probably like the definition of an Apple fanboy. I actually really enjoy using the Pixel 8 Pro and this is all my opinion and my experience. So yesterday I picked up the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and I've been on a fence about this watch for, I guess since it came out, I did buy it, the Ultra 1 and did like an unboxing and then I just returned it because I thought it was too expensive, not really worth the money. But now since I do so much outdoor running and outdoor exercising and workouts, I thought it'd be the perfect time to cop the Apple Watch Ultra 2 before my half marathon in San Francisco. Now, I also think you're gonna notice a theme when it comes to how I use the Pixel 8 Pro and that theme will be centered around productivity. And that's just my experience, like the iPhone 15 Pro has been my go-to for consuming content, but the Pixel 8 Pro has been my go-to when it comes to productivity. Like my favorite productivity app is this really simple app called To Do List. And I also use an app called Ilio, which is this mood tracking app that is a great way to just see how I felt throughout the week. So I decided to purchase the Pixel 8 Pro because I have to admit that the iPhone doesn't really excite me the way it used to and has seemed to plateau from a software innovation standpoint. If you ignore the slight camera upgrades, there honestly isn't that much of a difference between the 15 Pro and previous iPhone generations. To be honest, as a software engineer and content creator, I was thoroughly curious about the Pixel's camera and AI capabilities. I picked up the iPhone 15 Pro in the new natural titanium color with 256 gigabytes of storage. I initially wanted the blue titanium color, but when I saw the natural titanium colorway in person, I instantly felt that this was the best color. The iPhone 15 Pro has a 6.1 inch Super Retina, always on ProMotion XDR display with 2000 nits of peak brightness and powered with the all new A17 Bionic chip. The iPhone 15 Pro camera system is equipped with a 48 megapixel main camera delivering super high resolution photos. That's a direct quote from Apple that I 100% agree with. As a creator who loves taking photos, posting collage pictures on Instagram and posting carousel pictures on TikTok using my iPhone 15 Pro. The main camera has a 24 millimeter focal length at f1.78 aperture, a sneaky underrated 13 millimeter f2.2 ultra wide camera that performs pretty well in low light. The telephoto camera also has a 48 millimeter focal length at f1.78 aperture, giving you those sharp and high resolution magazine like picture quality. Apple also markets that the battery life for the iPhone 15 Pro is up to 20 hours of video playback. I decided to go with the Pixel 8 Pro with 256 gigabytes of storage in the Obsidian color. It just looked too stealth not to go with. It has a 6.7 inch OLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate, Tensor G3 processor. Pixel 8 Pro also has a triple camera system as well, 58 megapixel f1.7 main camera, 48 megapixel telephoto camera, and 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, impact with a plethora of in-post AI tools along with the modest 10.5 megapixel selfie camera. But what's been most impressive to me with the Pixel 8 Pro's camera is the 48 megapixel 5X optical zoom, which is main reason why there have been times where I chose to use my Pixel 8 Pro to take pictures and take it on a trip, opposed to the iPhone 15 Pro. The Pixel 8 Pro has a 120 hertz refresh rate, offers a peak brightness of up to 2400 nits, allowing for better visibility and maintaining its brightness even in bright sunlight. Google markets that the Pixel 8 Pro's battery life can last for more than 24 hours. timer for boiling sweet potatoes for lunch just ended and I wanted to end the timer hands-free just like how I started the timer hands-free I had a toast notification that told me to just say stop but I said 
stop instead and then it kind of aired out. So I don't know if that's a bad user experience because I would expect Google's AI to know that I have a timer running. So that's why I told it to stop, but maybe I should have just followed the Toast notification word for word. So I mostly use the Pixel 8 Pro for productivity. And I also just don't really use social media that often on this phone, even though I have YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok installed on this phone. Maybe Android has better productivity apps, or I, I don't know, maybe it's something specific to me where my iPhone is more used for consuming content and my Pixel be used for more productivity. And that may or may not be predicated on the features offered for each phone. I mean, if you really think about it, both have solid cameras. I'd say the iPhone has better, the camera footage of the iPhone looks better, it's more stable, especially transitioning between different focal lengths but the Pixel, it's much better in post, which is the main reason why when I would travel or go to some important event, I actually would bring the Pixel. And if you're thinking about cost, the Pixel 8 Pro costs just as much as the iPhone 15 Pro, but it has four focal lengths versus the iPhone 15 Pro only having three. When I went to my cousin's Ohio State football game, I really enjoyed using the Pixel 8 Pro shooting in RAW. 50 megapixels using the 5x focal lane to snap pictures of the stadium and the players on the field was unmatched. Okay, so this is my comparison as an Apple fanboy who's used both the Pixel 8 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro for about three months. In terms of cost, I spent $1,059 on the Pixel 8 Pro. I've seen it on sale for $859. The iPhone 15 Pro costs $1,099, so both phones were similarly priced initially, but you're more likely to find the Pixel 8 Pro on sale than the iPhone 15 Pro. The Pixel 8 Pro is undoubtedly the more fun phone to use. There are so many amazing AI tools and widget customizations that Android offers along with the fact that the Pixel 8 Pro display is larger and more vibrant than the iPhone 15 Pro. The 15 Pro is more seamless, the gestures are very natural and fluid. The Pixel 8 Pro still feels a bit clunky and gimmicky when interacting with apps and swiping. The biggest issue I have with the Pixel 8 Pro is that there's no back to top button, which makes interacting with websites a much more poor experience than I anticipated. If you're looking for a larger display and more exciting experience, I'd say go with the Pixel. If you're looking for a more smooth and reliable experience, I give that to the iPhone 15 Pro. So when it comes to unlocking my phone, I found that the Pixel 8 Pro has been much less reliable than the iPhone. The fingerprint and face ID work about 70% of the time, but never work when I'm in a rush. Also notice this bug where I'd unlock my phone and my apps don't show, it just shows my background image. Obviously iPhone doesn't have touch ID, so Pixel has more options for unlocking your phone, but face ID works much more often, performs better in low light, and if part of my face is covered, it still can unlock my phone. iPhone definitely wins this category. The Pixel 8 Pro's AI tools can't be ignored. The AI tool I've enjoyed the most is Google Lens. This feature is extremely helpful. Background noise reduction, faking sunsets in the background are also incredibly powerful. For example, we've used Google Lens to snap pictures of really cool buildings, along with taking pictures of animals or plants when walking in the park. I recently updated my Pixel and I've been loving the Video Boost feature, which makes low light and image stabilization so good on the Pixel 8 Pro. The 15 Pro's photos always look exactly how you intend to look. The low light is solid and most importantly, the contrast and shadows make me look more realistic like in this photo. Pixel 8 Pro has powerful AI tools and posts that allow you to doctor up your photos, but I still can't get over how poor transitioning between different focal lengths is. The zoom can be very unreliable with image stability and focusing issues. If you don't want to have to rely on posts, want your images to look great on social media, the iPhone is a better option. However, if you're doing maybe street photography, travel photography, or shooting a event for your family, then the Pixel 8 Pro could be an excellent choice. So here's the ugly truth. I'm deeply, deeply in the Apple e ecosystem and the iPhone was the first smartphone I've ever owned. Can't get over not having iMessage. It's just the best and most engaging way to interact with my friends and family. Apple says that they will support RCS later this year to ease the divide between the green and blue bubble communities. I need to see what that SMS experience actually looks like before I take a full plunge into the Android world. Ultimately, the Pixel 8 Pro is more fun. I find that I like the productivity tools and apps more than Apple's productivity app options. And the battery life is a bit better. However, the 15 Pro is just more reliable. The photos don't need much editing. Face ID is more reliable than Google's.
bit more. So that pretty much wraps up this review of the Pixel 8 Pro and 15 Pro. Be sure to comment your thoughts about each phone or whichever one you prefer. And also let me know if you want to see me review or do a day in a life with the Samsung S24 Ultra. And as always, have a blessed rest of your week. Peace.